Okay, on this beautiful, beautiful Wednesday where the sun is shining and the birds are singing and all is right with the world. Today is Ask Anola How, episode 20. And the question is, how can I make what I do stand out in the crowd? Now, I really thought about this question for you guys because there was a lot of subtext attached to this question today. And I kind of want to read to you the rest of the text of the question, because this is about real questions from real entrepreneurs. And this one, I think, will resonate with some of you. And I think it's an important one to uh, reflect on today. OK, so let me bear with me and I'm going to read it to you. OK, so the subtext or the core message was, how can I make what I do stand out from the crowd? But there's a history piece behind this. And this is something that is very often faced by entrepreneurs and I really want to air it, okay? So it's, I've come to the realization that the customers I had been targeting up until now, firstly, were a customer segment that I wasn't very familiar with. I got familiar with them over time, but while I was doing that, I was also missing out on what made me tick, okay? Now, the thing about what I do is that there's, and that's the piece that makes her tick. It's, now, the thing about what I do is that there's a lot of competitors in this area area so how do I stand out from the crowd I think I had lost everything in pursuit of what people said someone went and mentioned before were you doing what people were telling you or suggesting what you should do and that's where I got tail ended I thought okay that's the direction I'm really supposed to be going in to make a business and I overlooked all of my own customers who were sitting right in front of me I'm at a pivotal point in realizing myself, my business, and who my customers truly are. And I had overlooked them chasing what people were telling me I should be doing and who I should be going after. Such a common thing um, where we forget ourselves and in fact lose that core that we have, okay? And I kinda wanna address it point by point, okay? because we will address how to stand out, but we need to go a little bit deeper first, okay? That's actually the essence of all the work that I do and all the work that we have in Get Strategic. It is about, as some lovely, lovely person said, going inward first to get the answers we need to go outward, okay? So let's look at all the different aspects of this question, right? First of all, I want to say to you, always act on advice that resonates with you. Act on advice that makes sense to you, that fills you, that lifts you. Just because there is someone there that's a professional giving you advice, and I include myself in this, just because a professional gives you advice and advises you to do X, Y, or Z, ultimately it's back to that thing of you are the navigator of your own business. The box stops with you. So you are, it is okay to disagree with the advice, advice that you're being given once it's grounded in your own purpose and your own strong foundation of who you are, okay? And this is why I spend so much time when I work with clients and work with participants in any of the programs on how great marketing works. It is that going inward to get that strong, strong foundation around purpose, mission, vision, around profiling customers, around figuring out who you are and what you want to achieve and all that. It's really, really critical. And seeking advice, yeah, this point to myself, seeking advice has to be grounded in all that. But your business needs to be what lights you up. It has to serve you and you will change over the course of time. So your business must first serve you. I actually make this point later on. But it's the advice and the decisions you take about what resonates have to be grounded in your person, your purpose and who you are as a person. It's about what lights you up. If the advice seeks to make you hand over the power of your business, the decision of your business, because that's the impact. If you don't follow your own truth, and this is why I say this, marketing is your truth told, great marketing is your truth chaired. If the advice is not grounded in that, then the impact is effectively that you hand the power over your own business to somebody else. And yet still the buck stops with you. We 
choose to be in business for ourselves. We choose to create businesses, no matter what size they are, because of the freedom that it gives us, because of the impact we can make on the world and the choices that we can make about our own path. So any advice that you take needs to support that. And that's all. It needs to support that. So how you address that is you check, you check, you check for resonance. You check that it fits. You check that it fits you, what you want for your business, your purpose, and you as a person. You're allowed to be you as a person too in your business. Because when we remember that we are human and that we need our business to be in an align with where we are and who we are, then we are free to become greater at what we do. Really, really important. Need to ground that for you, okay? Next one. Yeah, my next point to this question is nobody can choose your customers for you. That's your job. Your job is to choose your customers. Now, the first, I suppose the first impactful piece here is to realize that you can choose because very often we're taught your just customers choose you. No, no, no. This is your business. You get to choose who you work with. You get to choose the space that you want to be in, what you become, want to become known for, and how you can best serve. You are also allowed to say no. You're allowed to say no to the work that doesn't serve you. You are allowed to say no to anything that doesn't help you grow. So you can choose customers at the start because it comes from this place of passion and this purpose that you have and this desire to serve and help somebody else. And you're allowed to grow in this process and then seek to find the next level of your own growth and then choose them. Your choice of customers should never be externally focused and someone else's choice. It needs to be your choice for what's in alignment for your business and your purpose and where you can best serve. Because sometimes on this path, it's about leaving go of what no longer serves you. And what you start, who you started out serving when you started this business may not be who you serve in three years time, in two years time, in 10 years time, in 20 years time. I know from experience that I've changed my customer base so many times that it's in alignment with where I am because that's where I can do my best work by growing and by growing, I help more people. So you are allowed to change your customers, but it is your choice. You choose them, nobody else. So when you get making sure that the advice is in alignment that you're getting, that was our point number one. And secondly, that when you get to choose customers, don't choose them without your ba brain being engaged and your heart being engaged. Choose them because they're in alignment with where you want to be and how you want to grow your business. Okay. Point number two, to address this complex question. Okay. Yes, the next point, and I probably kind of just said it, but let me state it. Your customers' needs must also align with your needs as an entrepreneur. Because when you have joy in your work, when you are in the best, you are in the best place to serve. Because you will always bring something new to the table because you're in joy, you're in passion. You are in this perfect position and perfect alignment of helping them best because you are the best person right now to help those people. There's a very interesting podcast um, that came out a couple of weeks ago and it was a, an interview between Amy Porterfield and Jonathan Fields. And he, Jonathan Fields, I've been aware of him for quite some time and I've followed him for quite some time. And he's, and I'm gonna put this in the comments below, but he released, uh, he's just done a study where he gathered over 25 million data points around burnout, okay? And how we need like to, you know, before we would have expressed, oh, you should always do what you love. And it seems in some ways seems airy fairy and indulgent to do what you love. Whereas in fact, we now have a piece of research that proves that we can serve ourselves best and serve everyone else best by doing what we are best aligned to do, by doing what fills us up by, by supporting our passions and being in the right place at the right time in that moment to help those people. 
He's released a free assessment um, around sparkotypes, and it's asking this idea of, it's a play on the word archetype, so it's what sparks you up, what fires you up. And it helps you look at what is your primary spark and maybe a shadow spark, and then what doesn't serve you. I think it would be worth exploring doing that as an exercise of check what your sparkotype is to make sure you're in alignment and making sure that you choose customers that spark you up. You are allowed to do this. You are free to do this. This will serve you best and it actually will make your business more successful because you will do your best work here. And when we do our best work, we have a greater chance of success. We can be more financially rewarded because we will be the best at it. Check it out. It's really worth doing. Okay. So when you have st steadied yourself, making sure the advice, and we all need professional advice, we need expert advice to help us as we grow. I obviously concur with that. But make sure that's an adv advice that aligns with who you are and where you are. Make sure that you choose customers that are also aligned with who you are and where you are. These are all active choices that contribute to real success, both financial success and personal success, okay? It's really important that I anchor that for you. This will have a monetary reward and will have a personal success reward in built into it once you follow it, okay? The next thing, because we're now, let's come back to the how do I stand out? And looking at this, what I want you to do is when you've chosen those customers and they are in alignment with where you are right now and where you want to take your business, the key thing that will help you stand out from the crowd will always be to lean in, to lean in and listen to what they're saying. I don't say this lightly, I say this tactically, to say, to actively listen to what your customers are telling you. Sometimes it's in a very subtle comment that's made off the cuff. It's something they may have shared in social media. It's some kind of behavior that gives you a clue to something that's happening. And the reason that we spend a lot of time building marketing engines to help us automate the things that are repetitive is to create space for this live engagement piece, for this ability to listen. And here is the ability to listen is what will make you stand out. So often I can see this in entrepreneurs, they're on automatic pilot. It's about get as much content out as possible, as much stuff keep the stuff going out because that's what works. It isn't. The automation helps us lean in, creates the space to lean in. And I want you to lean in once a day and listen to a conversation or something that a customer has said that will inspire your imagination to serve them better, to think of a way around something they've done. And I need you to do that because that is what will make the difference and show you as being different. Your ability to listen to a customer is unique because so often there's so much noise and so much chatter and such a tendency towards speaking and vocalizing and being seen and all of that kind of generation of noise that the place that there is the greatest difference is in the listening, and then in showing them that you're listening by what you do next, okay? Let's talk about what you do next, all right? And what you do next is, one, there's two things I want to leave with you in terms of standing out. Two really simple things that will make you stand out. The first one is, is to be consistent, because choosing to be consistent is rare. Again, there's so much noise. There is this, when you are solid in who you are, in the message that you want to get out there, you know the spaces that you want to own. And I advocate always that people choose four spaces that they want to own. I often call them pillar topics. And again, it's on the program, on each of the programs that How Great Marketing Works delivers. So when you think of your customer and who you want to serve, and you also think about what are the things that they're looking for? What are their pain points? What are their challenges? Where are the answers? What are the four answers? Are the four spaces that I can serve best? Is it about branding that elevates their business? 
is it about brand design and I need to make sure I'm I'm communicating regularly about brand design? Is it about growing? Is it about um, helping children um, be happier at school? Is it about reducing anxiety? Is it about a piece of software? Well, that will change how they hire everybody from here on in. It's irrelevant what it is. But what my exercise for you to do, because I think it's always good to walk away from these with an exercise, is to pick the four spaces that you want to become known for. So if one of your customers wanted to introduce you to somebody else, how would they describe you? What are the four spaces that they would say that you are expert in, that your product will help them most in? If any of these things, pick four. And pick four and stick to those four and be consistent in delivering answers in these four spaces. And what I mean by consistent is showing up once a week, like I'm doing at 12.30, at 12 o'clock every Wednesday, showing up every week, doing a blog post or an email every week, one thing every single week, because consistency in itself is rare and rareness is what will help you stand out. Commit to owning the space, that you discovered by discovering who you are and what you're here meant to be doing. So that is purpose, mission, vision. Who's the customer I choose to serve and what are the spaces I choose to be in and consistently deliver in those because it is rare and it will mean that you're in front of the right customers consistently and they won't forget that you're there. This will make you stand out. Okay. The second thing that I want to say to you that will help you stand out, okay? And that is be personal when nobody else thinks it's possible. Because there is an equation that happens there that people think that scale is now possible because of the technology we have. Scale is possible because we can plan everything in advance and release it appropriately at the right times to reach our customers' ears at the right times. But what that automation does is not make you an automaton, is not make you a robot. The purpose of automation is to help you reach more people, more people, more efficiently. The second purpose is to create space. One, as I said, to lean in and listen. But second is to be personal at scale. So use very obvious things like DMs or private messages or emails that people can reach out to you. Allow them, invite them to reach out to you personally. You can now do that at scale because you create space elsewhere. Also do things that send them a book when you start a project with them. Write them a personal note Record a video to thank them for signing up for your newsletter. Do all the things that you believe is not possible at scale. Do the things that you are able to do now because the technology will move again. And do 30 welcomes this month to people who sign up for your, your, uh, your newsletter. And no, you're not being paid to actually send that personal message, but it will bring your customer closer It will show that uniqueness that you bring. It will make you stand out above the crowd. Think beyond the obvious and choose to be personal when nobody else will. There are many people doing this, but not everyone is doing that. And that will make you stand out. And that's all I have for you today. Let me know if you have any questions. This has been Ask Finola How, episode 20. How do I stand out from the crowd? Please listen back on the story of the, of the entrepreneur who shared that backstory behind that question because it's important and it comes up for entrepreneurs quite a lot. So I'd like to leave you with that. Have a great day, everyone. Take care. Thank you.